everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program, and I'm thrilled to be here with you again. Ma, you know, I gotta say, there's something about 2010 that I like. You know, I know the Jets made a run, and so there wasn't as many episodes in the beginning as maybe we'd hoped. That was a little bit of a lapse in the scheme of this. We're fastly approaching our four year anniversary, and we're back to our roots a little bit. I know we've had more guests than I said I would, but um, I think this is gonna be a great action packed week of classic WLTB, and I'm feeling pretty good about the direction of the show. What do you think? It's, it's still amazes me, four years on. You know, the comments thing is really exciting me. Yes, it is. I want to thank all of you that are leaving comments, and I think you noticed I'm starting to get more and more active in there. I saw SS Chris wanted to see what I scored the wine the other day, and normally he would have emailed me or put it in the forum. It would have taken a million years, but now because I'm really able to go mobile with the comments and get in there, he got an answer right away. So please, all you old school vaniacs that are in the forums, or if you stop commenting, get in here. It's just really been exciting. And Ma, I don't know if you noticed, I'll probably actually call it out in tomorrow's show or the next day's show. Really, some really nice you know, conversations. I saw two fans from Finland find each other. So there's this whole community thing going on in the comments that I'm very excited about. People are having conversations because it's threaded. I don't know if you're seeing that, but it's exciting. Somebody called me a fraud. I had to jump in there. Anyway, Petite Sarah. You know, very intriguing grape bridal. I, I did this show because there's some really hardcore Petite Sarah fans in the old school maniacs and the new school maniacs. A lot of people have been asking for more Petite Sarah. And we're bringing thunder. We've got three badass Petit Sarahs here today. All scored about above 90 points. 91 Josh Reynolds, 92 Parker, 92 Parker. Uh, Bob Foley's involved. Um, one of the great winemakers, domestic winemakers in the world. Rockstar, plays the guitar. Just a cool dude. Great, great guy. Great winemaker. Um, and I'm excited about tasting this variety. Uh, you know, just a little fun fact stuff to start the show with. There's a bunch of people just getting into wine watching the show as well. And even if you're hardcore, you know, sometimes these subtle facts slip you. Um, you know, Petite Syrah is a very intriguing wine. Even though it's called Petite Syrah, a lot of people think it's not as big as a Syrah because Syrah wines, big wines. Petite Syrahs are bigger. They're, they're darker. Uh, they're, they're rounder. They're, they're meaner. They're meatier. Uh, they're very tannic. Uh, that is because Petite Syrah... Teat is for the is for the size of the grape, and so the skin juice ratio is different, as you can imagine. Smaller grape, more skin to juice compared to a bigger grape, and so you're gonna get really tannic, age-worthy wines. These wines commonly can last for 20 to 25 years in a cellar, and uh, they're very, very popular wines. Uh, the grape varietal um, comes from Derif. And Derif was discovered in the 1880s by Francois Derif. He found a new uh, varietal and kind of named it after himself. I like that, Mott, you know? You know, just, you know. Why didn't, you know, why didn't Christopher Columbus do that? We could be United States of Columbus. That was a mistake. You know, just name it after yourself. It's the way to go. You know, I'm just gonna rename this show to like the Gary Vaynerchuk show. Name it after yourself. Francois Derif was onto something. Anyway, this is a varietal, Petit Syrah and Derif. 90% of the Petit Syrah in uh, the U.S. that's planted in California is actually Derif. And once they've started recognizing that through DNA tests, you know, California kind of made the distinction that they are cinnamon, so they mean the same thing. But they are a little bit of a, a different uh, uh, varietal, um, but they're the same. So Derif, Petit Syrah, uh, really interesting wines go great with a magnitude of different foods, steaks, big burgers, barbecue, uh, big wines, and uh, let's see how they stand up to the test. Let's get right into them. The Elise 2006 Rutherford Napa Valley Petit Sirah, 28 bones, um, and uh, let's see what's going on here. I'm excited about this. Swirly, swirl, swirl. Give it a little snippy snip. Oh, if you want to taste along with Friday's show, here are going to be the wines that we uh, we do. We're going to be doing um, Banyul, which is late harvest Grenache dessert wine from the Rhone Valley. And uh, Mott, I'll have you link these up as well. But actually, leave, leave, leave a comment instead of linking it up. We'll leave the first comment for the show okay. with the two wines that we'll be tasting Friday. Thought it could be kind of interesting if you want to taste along. Um, Gives you a whole week to order it or find it locally. 
Um, something I'm gonna just start trying to do more often is give you a preview of Friday's show so you guys can taste along, which I think could add a lot of value to the experience. So, anyway, little snippy sniff. First thing you're recognizing is that there's no bashfulness in this wine. Big, bold, blueberry, blackberry, very jammy, candied-esque kind of fruit. Very bright fruit on Petit Syrah. Very dark, you know. You know, I like to use that whole shaved dark chocolate. I get that quite a bit here. It's very inky, um, squid inky. You know, just thick, viscous ink, purple, little pepper. Let's give it a whirl. It's a good wine. It's, you know, it's a good wine to start this week on. Let me just. Mm. It's kind of like the first push-up on Monday morning. <coughs> I wish I did that, actually. Anyway, um, this is a big wine, but as powerful as it is, it's not completely ripping my face off. The tannins are firm. Let's give them a little more. Um, it, is, it is a very big wine. There's no mistaking that. This is a little one-dimensional, kind of like fruit bomby in a way. Good firm tannins, but kind of sweet. I do get a hint of tobacco on the back end. Very dark. Um, this is big boy wine. I firmly believe that a lot of people that are really into Napa Valley Cabernets and those big cabs are missing out on this whole Petit Syrah run. A lot of people have segued and started discovering them, but I think a lot more people would enjoy it. There's a little bit more oak in this wine that I prefer. It's a little vanilla-esque on the back end, which is fine. Creme brulee coming through um, on, the, on the back end. Uh, it's missing a little bit of a mid-palate, which disturbs me. It's not the most complex wine of all time, but it's kind of like an NBA dunk, slam dunk champion. Like maybe D. Brown, something like that, you know, or Kenny Skywalker, um, you know, it's very flashy and exciting, and you can win slam dunk contests, you know, Cedric Sabalos, you know, those kind of things, but, you know, is it a complete basketball player? No, dunking is only one part of the game, Mott. Um, it's actually a very small part of the game, and that's kind of what this wine's doing for me. I think it's very flashy in what it does and can seduce a lot of people. You know, pretty girl problems, you know, Mott? You know, it can seduce a lot of palettes out there. Charming guy, you know those guys, you know the girls want to change him, the bad boy thing. It's got that one dimension, but it's not a complete package by any stretch of the imagination. It's a good wine, I'm gonna score 89 plus points. It's right there, and it's a lot of fun. But I do think that this wine's one dimensional aspect is something that, I, I'm surprised Josh didn't score a little tougher. Uh, he scored at 91 points, he's a good reviewer, one of the people that I'm probably most associated with. Um, I just think it's a little high. I, I don't think you could score a wine a 90 point score unless it's bringing more things to the table. Even though it's bringing one thing to the table that's very, very good. It's a sexy wine, um, but it's lacking depth and has no mid palate. And I would really question where this wine goes over the next five to 10 years. I feel like it kind of stays the same. Um, doesn't evolve like your high school boyfriend. All right, let's move on. Make a lot of relationship references, don't I, Matt? I think it paints a picture people can understand. All right, let's do a little rinse. Matt, did you watch the Pro Bowl? No. Grammys? You were here at inventory last night, that's right. Lady Gaga got screwed, Matt. Did she? Ugh, Lady Gaga got screwed. Hosed. Corte Riva, 2005, Petit Sarras, 70% from Lake County, 30% from Napa, 15-2 alcohol, not bashful. 92 points, Robert Parker. Um, Bob Foley is involved with this project. I think he might be the winemaker here. Maybe not anymore, but um, 35 bones. And again, very dark. You're gonna get really, let's get really in here. Let's see if we can even go all the way up here. Like, you can, you, are we getting some good cut? We getting a good shot of this? Oh, with the, the ceiling background. Is how, about, how about against the light over here? Does that do anything? Better. I think they'll get the idea. I really think it's important to get the idea here because Petit Sarah's wines are so inky. This is not what you want to serve at a house party if you love your carpet. I mean, this is black, inky, inky, inky stuff. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Now, this wine's even dramatically more extracted than the last wine. I almost get, you know, there's a time when wines get so inky, there's almost like this orange 
peel thing that I get on them, and I'm getting it on this wine. Very big wine. There's a little stinkified action here. Believe it or not, not the most atypical nose that I've ever seen from Petit Syrah. Does have a little creativity to it, but there's this orange peel kind of thing going on. It's almost like drambuie, you know, kind of, um, um, I don't know, kind of weird stuff. Grand Marnier, almost, at, you know, style. Um, very dark, um, black currant blueberries, dark fruit again. Neither of these showed any kind of strawberry or cherry. These have just been dark blueberry currant kind of thing going on. Let's give it a whirl. It's big wine. Big wine, very chewy, has this nice, mm, see, mm, one thing I can recognize immediately in the difference of these two wines is the second wine really has this great tea-like earthiness kind of brush. You know, I like this little hints of wood, but that's mixed in with flowers um, and spices. Has a much more complex finish than the last wine. Again, lacks a little bit of a mid palate for me. Big wine, <clears throat> to me, this is the kind of wine that I think you wanna have once in a blue moon. I, I can see myself getting extremely bored with this style of wine if I taste it a whole lot, but this is delicious. And delicious is never wrong, never. So there's a really great sweetness to the fruit of this wine, it's well made. I'm gonna score 90 points, I, I like it more than the last wine, but as you can tell by the score, not so much more. Um, because again, what I'm having a tough time dealing with at some level is there's a hardcore dimension of big, bold, dark fruit, delicious, little chocolate, good firm tannins, but I do feel like this wine and this variety for me at times, and I was hoping that some of these wines would change that, get extremely one-dimensional. You know, dimension's delicious, which is good, you know? Just looking for something a little more. Thank God for that finish because it's it lacks even, I don't think it's even as interesting as the first wine until the finish. I feel like it's even more of a plump. Here it is, boom. You know, um, pretty good. Pretty good, you know, it's funny. You know, as you could tell, I scored it well because it's good wine. But you can see it's not like totally crushing me. You know, it's, um, I don't know, this variety is very interesting to me. I think that they taste so good that it's hard to really get mad at them. But uh, again, I'm really on this kick of, you know, end. That's what I feel like it is. It's like, end, dot, dot, dot. You know, so, <clears throat> getting a little end. All right, let's see if this can change the show. Robert Foley, 2006 Pepperland Petit Syrah. 92 points, Robert Parker. 55 U.S. Bones Mott. Double nickels. Let's see if this has any thunder to it whatsoever. You can see Mott. I started this show high. You know, the wines, the wines have a bigger factor on this show than I think I might even realize. Let's give it a snippy sniff. Now this has a little bit more interesting stuff going on in the nose as well. Similar more to the second wine and the first wine. There's a little bit of a, a, a green factor coming through, which I like, just this little hint of evergreen, but it's surrounded by big dark chocolate covered, dark chocolate covered, you know, grapes, which I know is silly, but the grape candy flavor. Let's give it a whirl. You know, interesting. You know, I, I think I, I like this wine the least, believe it or not. And I think Bob Foley is a genius. I don't know, just kind of meh. You know, big wine, again, one dimension, good dimension, good fruit, big fruit, but kind of thin finish, believe it or not. The, the finish surprises me on this wine. It's got a lot of flavor, but it's kind of, I don't know. It's a weird show for me. I don't know. I feel like 
I feel a little bit tougher than normal. So that's one thing that's running through my mind. I just don't feel the petite Syrahs here. I just, I feel like this flavor can be replicated for less money. I don't know why. I just feel like these are big, bold, you know, it's unfair for me to beat up Barossa and then, you know, not question the lack of mid palate, the lack of other flavors in this wine, the secondary kind of structure, the secondary flavor profile. I mean, these are just big purple monsters punching in the mouth with some good fruit and good firm tannins and send you on your way. You know, I don't know, I'm just wine 88 plus. Good wine, but for 55 bones, I don't see it. And just buying it on the pedigree of who Bob Foley is, it's not enough. It's just not. And I, I really think that, you know, based on this tasting, and these were all 06s, a little young and not the greatest vintage of all time, but, you know, for me, I'm a little caught off guard and, you know, questioning what the potential is of Petit Sirah in California. Just, I just, um, I just feel like I can replicate this in Australia or even Israel, who does a lot of Petit Sirah for less. And so, I don't know, a little disheartened today a little bit, Mott, you know? I feel like Petit Sirah let me down. Yeah, I don't really have us, you know, I'm very surprised, you know what, let me just do this. I'm trying to be as fair as I can. I, I really had a, actually high expectations. And, and Mott, you've probably noticed through the years, there's some serious Petit Sirah fans that are gonna come out, you know, there's gonna be some pitchforks in the comment section, I think, today. That being said, I hope people appreciate where I'm coming from. Yeah, I feel good about the score. J just recognize that this is a lighter style than the other two. Foley's wines tend to get really big and extracted. Um, but this has a little bit more going on, actually, because of that. You know, it's not hidden by the bombastic elements of it. I'm like stalling here, trying to hope like something weird. Like I, I, I feel like I'm stalling. I feel like I'm hoping like somebody pop, like Scooby Doo pops up. I'm like, hey, let's fix the show. I, I, I just like, I don't know. I don't even know what Scooby Doo means. I'm just, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm, I, I think literally the wines have thrown me off a little bit. I expected dramatically more, and I'm actually, I think I know what I'm doing. I'm not even happy of how high I scored them. I was just in a good mood that I'm pumping out good shows this week. I'm gonna readjust my scores, Mott. I've rarely ever done this, ever. Um, I just feel like it's, you know, it's appropriate. Uh, I'm gonna score the, uh, I'm gonna keep the 89 plus on this. No, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 87 plus on this. 88 plus, 88 plus. 88 plus for different reasons and uh, an 89. Just not excited. Question of the day. Recent, uh, two questions, because now you guys are really getting in there. What are your thoughts on Petit Syrah? And that goes without, you know, even, uh, without even questioning. Um, question number two, what recently have you gone in with some expectations and were kind of disappointed? That's it, that's where I'm at. Get in the comments, I'm gonna be around tonight. 9, 10, 11, 12, I wanna get in there with you. You, with a little bit of me, changing the wine world. I think.